Oklahoma made a top 10 list, but it's not one we should be happy about. Recently, I spoke with Tiger Joyce, president of the American Tort Reform Association, about changes our state might want to make in tort reform. Tiger, unfortunately, I see Oklahoma is on this top 10 list of judicial hell holes. Explain what that is and how we wound up on this list. Well, it's a list, Aaron, that you don't want to be on. Uh, the judicial hell holes are the places where we believe equal justice under the law is simply not generally available to defendants uh, in civil litigation. These are the places where personal injury lawyers like to bring their cases and where you have an overall climate uh, that promotes lawsuit abuse rather than balanced legal reform. We've had this problem in our nation for quite some time. Uh, now that we're rounding out 2019, what are you seeing as some sort of trends in this? Well, one of the trends we've seen certainly in, in Oklahoma, which is litigation being brought by governments uh, uh, when, when it should be left to public health officials and others, your uh, opioid lawsuit brought by uh, the Attorney General uh, we believe he was correct when he filed a brief in a case uh, involving uh, climate change when the allegation was that it constituted a public nuisance. Uh, we think the Attorney General's thinking there was on target. We agreed with it, uh, but he seemed to take a very different opinion with respect to uh, uh, the opioids lawsuit. We're seeing cities and counties bringing similar lawsuits. We're seeing entrepreneurial lawsuits on things like uh, digital privacy, uh, which should be an important policy issue, and it shouldn't be something that gives rise to entrepreneurial plaintiff's lawyers uh, enriching themselves, uh, and also efforts to defeat arbitration, which is a, a reasonable and important way to, to accomplish uh, the objectives of litigation without the time, expense, and burden. Uh, those are some of the, the developments uh, that we're seeing around the country. So in terms of the Johnson & Johnson case that you're referring to here in Oklahoma, how should that have been handled in your opinion? Well, basically we think that uh, it's, a, it's a public health question. Uh, it, we think individuals that might have a claim against a company, that's one thing. Uh, but for the government simply to say, the state government simply to say uh, that it's going to accomplish its broader public health ob objectives uh, through uh, litigation. We disagree with that. We don't think that's the way to go about doing this. You have a governor, you have a state legislature, you have public health officials, you have Congress and the president. I think all should be focused on the significant public health impacts uh, of opioid abuse, uh, and that would be uh, an appropriate way. Courts simply don't exist and don't have the, uh, uh, the, the, they don't really exist for that purpose. They should be used to resolve disputes. Uh, and we think that that would have been a more productive way. We could talk about this um, at length, but thank you so much for enlightening us. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much.